for the field school hub is that we need to start applying it. There is always not a, any document that you do up to the finalization stage, but rather you can have a, 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 a a version that we can be able to apply as we keep on modifying the mail uh, framework is also a living document there could be some things that will come on board but for the field school we are saying we need to apply it um, the other part that I want to mention is that our master trainers now are on board and they are really working very hard to catch up the assignment we request that when they get to you or if you have if Halima has anything she wants the master trainer to support feel very free to contact any of the master trainers who are closer to you because the master trainers are not really employees but they are part of the fraternity uh, so they are volunteers who are really very keen to support the field school uh, approach in the region and they want to add value to any initiative of course we thought that they would do more with investment projects but some of these investment projects are start just starting so we want them to go beyond that so having said so um nathan now is on board i would like to give emma uh like three five minutes you just highlight how how you are moving with the registration of the hub you may not necessarily want to do a, a, a powerpoint but if you have it that's also okay for people to appreciate <laughs> but if you don't have it's okay we can arrange next wednesday actually is a dedicated time for all the consultants that we have now to present progress in various uh, areas that they are working on so that the field school fraternity will be able to give feedback but also direction on how we should move with the East Africa East Africa field school hub again I want to welcome all of you after Emma then I will hand over to Edwin to to manage the part of the mail and we pro we continue over to you Emma Okay, thank you so much, Matt, and uh, a good morning to everyone that is attending the call. As Max introduced me, name, my name is Emmanuel Tumuhaisei, and I am leading on the registration and the legalization of the Field School Hub. So in the few minutes that have given me, I want to present the progress which specifically which relates to the name reservation, Emma, which was... One, uh, sorry, Emma. You seem to be having two devices. If maybe your phone is also connected, just double check. You could be having two devices. Disconnect one and continue with one so that there is no echo. Thank you. In case... Can you hear me better now? Yes, that's clear now. Hello. Kindly proceed. Okay. It was, um, it was the headset. So I was saying in a few minutes that I've been given, I'm going to uh, give details in respect to the progress on the registration status and uh, some information that we may need to, to, to move forward. So first things first, uh, the major issue that we had to deal with was to get approval of the name, uh, which was the uh, Eastern Africa Field School Support Hub. So what happens at the point of uh, reservation of the name is that um, um, in many instances, the register of companies is reluctant to give names, that, uh, to, give names to private companies that bear resemblance to government entities or any public body, so to speak. So at the time when we applied for the name reservation of the East African Field School Support Hub Limited, it was uh, rejected initially because of two, uh, of two issues. One, the fact that it was uh, long, and secondly, because of the 
Eastern Africa. So ideally, the argument of the Registrar of Companies was that uh, Eastern Africa should uh, is a name or a words that should ideally be limited to entities that are associated with either the East African community or are associated with, uh, with the Ministerial Council. Uh, and if we intend to utilize the same, ideally we should obtain um, uh, approval from the Ministerial Council. However, we had meetings with, uh, uh, with the Registry of Companies to explain the uh, to explain the organisation and its objectives, and uh, the fact that it has already been operating, it has been operating as a project under an already established uh, under an already established organisation. So on that basis, and uh, with further consultations, the register of companies finally approved uh, uh, approved the name. And uh, going forward, this is the name that we shall use to register to register the entity. Now, um, secondly, the other important issue is in respect of the members of the organization. So we are registering the entity as, uh, first of all, as a company limited by guarantee. And subsequently, we shall uh, also register it as a non-government organization with the uh, NGO Bureau. So what happens with the company limited by guarantee is that you have got to identify members or what we call guarantors for the company. And uh, these members will be liable uh, to the extent of their guarantee in the event that uh, the organization or the NGO intends to wind up, so to speak. So in my initial discussions that I had with, uh, with uh, Max, uh, he had informed me that the organization will have, will have both individuals and entities um, as members. So that is both from uh, FAO and any other entities that we may that we may uh, that we may need. So for purposes of our discussion going forward, it will be important that we determine the members that will uh, form. Uh, this uh, group of persons that are important for the registration of the entity. And uh, thirdly, we also need to establish a board of uh, directors uh, who will be in charge of uh, the day-to-day -day management of the entity, which is separate from the management, uh, uh, from the management team uh, that will be ideally the employees of the organization. So the board of directors will have members who are nominated by the, the members themselves. So whether it is a uh, foul forwarding, uh, forwarding a name to be, uh, to be a director on the board or uh, the members here present establishing or determining or deciding who will be uh, And uh, it is these members uh, together with the board of directors that will be signing any documentation uh, that we shall need to register both the organization and also pursue any other, uh, any other documentation. Um, yes. Now, um, maybe the other issue that is important to bring to your attention is the, that uh, we shall need a, an organogram or um, a structure for the organization. And this will be dependent on two factors. One, the moment we establish the hub and it provides uh, consultancy services, if at any one point, these consultancy services will be treated and this becomes a major issue from a tax perspective. These consultancy services will be treated as, um, as uh, income. For the for the hub, and ideally URA will want to tax that um, that income. So in order for us to uh, to avoid instances of uh, any income and grants being subject to tax, we shall need to obtain a tax exemption certificate from uh, from URA. Now, how do we obtain this exemption certificate? We write to URA informing them of uh, our status and further also detailing the objectives of the NGO 
and uh, uh, essentially the activities that they partake. We also have got to prove to URA that any incomes that are earned by the organization are not for the benefit of any individuals, but are rather for purposes of pursuing and pushing forward the objectives of uh, the field school hub. So on that uh, basis, it is the reason as to why we shall have to go further. One of the major reasons as why we shall have to go further and uh, register the organization as an NGO because NGOs under the Income Tax Act under the law in Uganda have uh, an exemption certificate, are treated as exempt uh, organizations well, much as they require a formal letter from the Commissioner General of, um, of um, URA. So it, it would be very difficult for us to prove uh, that um, it is a charitable entity if it purely maintains the status of a company uh, limited by guarantee. Ideally, we will tend to push such entities into the realm of, um, of trading or consulting, um, cons consulting companies, which is what we do not want at this moment. So uh, from this discussion, we may end up having uh, um, a number of committees that will play, uh, that will play this, particular, uh, this particular role. So in the event that the consultancy, uh, the consultancy is, uh, is, plays a major part of the activities of the hub, it will be important that we, um, we establish and uh, determine whether keeping it as part and parcel of uh, the NGO is not detrimental at the, end of, um, at the end of the day. But if the activities of the NGO, which are charitable in nature, uh, far outweigh the consultancy, the consultancy activities, then it becomes easy and we can maintain both, um, um, both activities or entities, if you want to call them that, under the, same, um, under the same umbrella. So for purposes of our discussion today, uh, the two major issues, the two major issues that we need or I need guidance on is uh, are who will be the members of uh, the organization. There is no maximum. We can have as uh, many as 10 members or even 20 members, um, uh, but below 100, sorry, below 100. And also who will sit on the board of the organization. So thank you so much, uh, Max. Okay, thank you. Well, thank Emma. you so much, uh, Mr. Yeah. Proceed, proceed, Max. Oh, okay, thank you for that update. I think uh, uh, we need a, another discussion internally here with a few members who are face to face. Um, I'm happy Dr. Gole has also joined. And the other part which I had already mentioned is that uh, when we did the registration of AFAS, uh, originally it was a company limited by guarantee without share capital, so that you, are, you don't have the liabilities to, to, the, to the directors. Then, then if somebody asked me, is it, not, is it possible just to go straight to NGO registration rather than going to the company, then NGO? Those ones, I think you, you have a better sense on, at, on that. I think we, we can limit the discussion on this, but what we wanted is for the members to reflect. If you have any, any issues, we shall request you to send to the secretariat, send to me, Edwin then we can be able to engage again with the Emma to see how we move forward. Otherwise, if somebody has only one thing, maybe this is also opportunity, we can allow two people to mention a few things. But in terms of the membership, Emma, I think it's not a hundred because you know the field school is for East Africa and it's going to be all the, the, the institutions that are implementing field schools definitely will be the members, but also there are professional people one-on-one -on -one who, who will want to be on their own to join the, the hub. 
So they are professionals, but they are also institutions. Like, for example, AFAS can be a member, Country Fora can be a member, Ministry of Agriculture, the only ministries of agriculture and will be members, and other NGOs, private sector, uh, some of the universities. So they, they, this diversity of membership to they have. So it's not basically about individuals. That means it will go, it is a big number. We are hoping to have all the East Africa in the hub. And there is also a possibility that it should it should operate beyond East Africa. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Max. Maybe I'll just respond to the last issue on membership and all the other technical issues. We can always arrange for another um, meeting or Zoom call to to discuss the details. Uh, so the membership that I was referring to is in respect to the subscribers of the memorandum of uh, of association. So the subscribers ideally will be different from uh, the members who will be a part of the of uh, the organization. So the, we shall treat them as two different entities, and we shall create separate structures for uh, for both entities. So uh, an organization like uh, AFAS will be a subscriber to the memorandum of uh, to the memorandum of association, and uh, say even Ministry of Agriculture can be a subscriber to the memorandum of. Uh, association but a person who's implementing uh, a, a hub uh, will obtain membership right. subsequent to okay can now please okay thank you proceed Emmanuel oh, yes um, so basically yeah I was finalizing in terms of our uh, the fact that we shall treat them as two different um, entities. Uh, ideally, we would, um, anyway, this is a discussion that we shall have later on with the smaller team, but um, the subscribers ideally, would want, uh, depending on other factors, they shouldn't even go beyond uh, five or six, uh, so to speak. But again, this is a discussion that we can have with, uh, with the smaller team, but all the other structures will be in place to ensure that uh, all the other implementing partners or personnel that have uh, activities that they are pursuing and that they have can obtain registration within um, uh, within the, the organization after it has been registered. Okay, so I think that is it. If there is no other question, uh, for now, send us the email, then we give the floor now to Nathan and over to you, Edwin, to manage that. Again, we want to welcome all the members. Today, we are really a great number here. So over to you, Edwin. Well, thank you. Thank you, Max. Uh, and thank you, Emmanuel, for that elaborate uh, update on the, the process of registration. We are looking forward to a membership of almost 30 million farmers who have gone through the FFS training. And we are looking forward to a membership of another 100 or so institutions, which are universities, research organizations, and also middle-level colleges. So it's something that maybe we will sit down as a smaller team and advise uh, accordingly. So for the time being members, if you have any other issues on the legal and uh, registration status of the hub, can you make use of our platform, our social media handles, we can have in-depth discussions even after this meeting. So without further ado, allow me to introduce uh, Nathan Okui, who will give a presentation on the mail, the monitoring, evaluation, and learning guide, and then from there, our colleague Ori Pratt will kind of sum up and also advise on the way forward. Uh, maybe just as a preamble, there was a very big meeting in Bangkok, Thailand in 2017 to discuss how to undertake monitoring and evaluation of FFS. And this was a global meeting. And part of this global meeting now recommended the formation of regional hubs for easier monitoring and technical backstopping. So uh, along these uh, premises and the recommendations from the Bangkok 2017 meeting, a meeting was organized in Addis Ababa by the, by the FAO sub-regional office. Uh, 
from the 19th to 21st of November to come and seek and uh, develop a, a guide on monitoring, evaluation, and learning. This meeting had about 44 participants drawn from the region, and a draft workshop report was produced, which will also be shared on our platform. So it, it is based on this meeting. That's uh, the premise that uh, our m and &E consultant specialist, uh, Nathan Okui, will now go ahead and make this presentation. So Nathan, please proceed. But I've noticed you are having two devices. So you'll have to mute the other Nathan and use the item. Thank you, please proceed and mute yourself. Nathan, can you hear me? Please proceed. Nathan, we can't hear you. Ah, uh, Nathan, I think you forget about the video because whenever you put your video, you almost fall off. So just stick, proceed without the video. Nathan, we can't hear you. Max, I think I'm having a, a problem or am I the only one? I cannot hear Nathan speak. It's, it seems he has even fallen. I don't see him. Okay. Meanwhile, we wait for Nathan. I also want to give a chance to Ori uh, just to to greet, but also give a... a, 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 a Edwin has given some historical uh, perspective, but you uh, know, Ori has been leading us in this process. Maybe Ori, uh, as we wait for Nathan to get on board, you could uh, tell us about how we worked on this mail up to where we are now, and also where we want to go. Uh, Nathan, Nathan, please. Um, hello, Nathan. Um, yes, can you hear me now? No, uh, wait. Um, you wait a bit, Nathan. We have uh, said that you, you settle, but also don't put your video. So we've given uh, Ori to first say a few words, then you'll come on board when you have settled. So over to Ori as Nathan okay. is on board. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Max and Edwin. Uh, it's good to see everybody here this morning. Uh, just to give you some background information, I don't want to go too, too in depth of what uh, Nathan is going to present. So as Edwin had said, there was a, an initial monitoring evaluation learning framework exercise workshop that was in Bangkok. And then there were efforts uh, to have 
uh, a regional, more contextualized approach to Eastern Africa that was held uh, a year ago. Wow, it's uh, gone by very fast this year. Uh, and so we, we gathered participants from, I believe it was eight different countries across Eastern Africa. We even had folks come up from Malawi uh, and down from our headquarters in Rome to, to discuss and share. And what the big concept of the monitoring framework is, is that farmer field schools have impacts, uh, what we see, what FAO sees across four different domains. So uh, the first is um, the, um, let, me, let me bring them up here. The, the first is the, the, the human uh, domain. Uh, it's kind of the individual level. What kind of impact do, does a farmer field school have on an FFS participant, uh, whether that's kind of um, you know self confidence, uh, especially being able to speak up in a group, um, analytical skills by you know examining what their problems are and being able to uh, internalize them uh, and and vocalize you know what their problems actually are you know whether that be an infestation of a pest, uh, limited soil fertility, erosion, uh, you know, different, different sort of um, constraints that they have. The next is more uh, at this, the social level or what we say uh, a group level. So how groups, what kind of impact FFS have on a group on being able to make decisions or empowering themselves to, to speak up to the government and ask for services if they are trying to request water services, um, or, or if a road is in bad condition, that they have a collective voice to go to their government and ask for these services and, and demand for them. So this is what the, the, the social impact looks like. Um, and as well, it could, could even uh, relate to community conflict. So we know that FFS have had the power to bring together community members who have been fighting or have had tension in the past, and they are now able to come together and resolve their problems because of, uh, because of their participation in a farmer field school. The next domain is the natural or more of the production aspect. So what kind of impact does FFS have on production? Whether that be the reduced use of uh, inorganic fertilizers or pesticides, that farmers are able to come up with their own homemade remedies to control pests or um, increased soil for fertility through use of organic manure or, or compost, um, increase in production and productivity. So of course, these are all kind of tangible measures, whereas the, the first two are more of a, a perception level of what they perceive. You know, what, what kind of perception do they have of self-confidence when they start an FFS and then what do they have after an FFS? And the last is the financial domain. So an ability to form uh, a collective savings account, uh, increased incomes, uh, access, uh, availability to access credit or different financial services. So those are the four different domains. And what we, what we came up with in, in ADIS are a group of different sort of indicators. So we would have the the output level, you know, what kind of activities does an FFS do to lead to that immediate output? So we could see perhaps uh, an increase in production or reduce uh, infestation of pests. Those are kind of the immediate effects. Then when we look further down the scale at the outcome and impact level, which are more long-term, they get a bit harder to, to understand and to create metrics and to analyze, to measure. So we had split up into different groups based on their own sort of interest in that particular domain. And we came up with some different sort of indicators at the output outcome and impact level. And from that, we've taken it forward. We've discussed with, with FAO HQ uh, what, what some of the, you know, what some of our group decisions were uh, and we've had some discussions 
uh, throughout the year. Unfortunately, uh, as you can imagine, COVID has really upended our normative work. So we've had to shift focus on more of the emergency aspects, and especially from this, from the sub-regional level here, we've had a big outbreak in pests, especially the desert locust upsurge. So we've really been busy with that this year. So it's my my desire that you know we continue the work, um, and the ultimate goal is to really put this out into the field and get it tested, because we understand that M and E and FFS have not really done well. Uh, we really need to strengthen that. And that's an area in all projects uh, in, in development that m and &E aspects are, are a bit weak and need to be strengthened. So by putting focus on this framework, we can really measure the, the impact that FFS have across these different domains. Now, that's not to say, uh, look, you know, these are all, they all need to be contextualized. So if you're running a pastoral field school, then your natural level, uh, your natural domain indicators will be completely different if you would be running a fisheries field, an aquaculture field school, or a crop production field school. Uh, and this is where we start getting into that nitty gritty discussion of, well, how contextualized do the indicators and levels need to be versus how general should they be to measure all different uh, types of field schools across that natural or financial domain. So this is where I want to leave it. Maybe nothing can take it a bit more. And, and I think we'll have a lot of uh, great discussion today. Thanks so much. Excellent. Great. Uh, now over to, over to Edwin to Asha in Nathan. Thank you, Nathan. You can now yes, share you? your screen. You can, can you hear me now? Yes. yes uh, I tried to share the screen, Edwin, but I think you are dis disabled screen sharing. Uh, let me see if that... Uh... Now it's possible for you. Okay. So is everyone able to see uh, the screen? Very well, very well, Nathan, thank yeah. you. Put on slideshow, put, put it, it on, on slideshow, slide yeah. Thank you, that's better. Yes, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to see uh, all of us uh, in today's session. And uh, 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 thank you, uh, Pratt and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Edwin for the brief highlight on the, uh, on the mail framework. So today we really want to see uh, what this uh, mail framework is all about and uh, how we can be able to use it as a document that we shall be using for monitoring and evaluation of farmer field school activities from wherever we are conducting our, all our farmer field school initiatives. So uh, by the end of today, we should be, I should be able to uh, I know all of us are familiar with the uh, monitoring, evaluation, and learning, uh, but just to give a brief reminder, and then we shall uh, uh, look at the indicators, uh, especially the indicators that were developed during the workshop in, uh, in Addis Ababa. And then we should also be able to look at the development of the, how, how, the, how the framework was developed and how we shall operationalize it. And then uh, uh, I'll probably conclude with the tools to be used for the M and E for the farmer field schools. And this uh, we've tried to uh, have them in the mail framework document that is already circulated. Uh, so we are very familiar with these words: monitoring, evaluation, learning. But how do we differentiate them? They they seem to be uh, similar, but uh, they have uh, uh, small small differences. So uh, this table uh, here summarizes what ideally monitoring and what evaluation is. So uh, with monitoring, we are doing uh, ongoing data collection to assess if we are making progress in achievement of uh, the desired objectives that we want. Uh, so monitoring is ongoing, but uh, uh, evaluations are periodically done, uh, probably uh, uh, you set uh, a given time, and most 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 of them are done at the uh, end of uh, uh, pro program implementation. So you want to see now the desired impact. So uh, monitoring looks at uh, more of activities and outputs, but the, the evaluation you're looking at uh, 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 measuring uh, changes in terms of outcomes and and impacts. 
So uh, monitoring, like I said, it's more of a short-term uh, corrective action, uh, but for evaluation, we're looking at more of uh, guiding us to decision-making about future programs. Uh, with monitoring, we are looking at accountability for implementation. On the other, on the other side, evaluation looks at more of accountability for results. And uh, uh, monitoring is usually done internally within uh, uh, internal processes of the organizations, while most evaluations would always be done by external evaluate, uh, uh, evaluators who will be able to give you the clear picture of uh, the desired impacts as uh, that that the organization would be wanting to achieve. So that's really a brief highlight of what monitoring and evaluation is. So, so in, in regard to the farmer field schools, why should we do uh, monitoring? So we are saying that each actor adopting the farmer field school approach really has the responsibility to monitor the achievement of results. And uh, uh, this should be uh, done regularly and systematically. And uh, the monitoring also helps for continued review of uh, progress in terms of capacity development needs that might uh, come up uh, during farmer field school implementation. Uh, we should also do monitoring to basically improve the result based reporting on achievements. Uh, if, if, you're, if you're running farmer field schools and you're aiming at certain achievements, then uh, you monitor to check if you're really uh, 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 attaining those achievements. But also uh, monitoring really feeds into the evaluation and uh, real-time learning aspects. In terms of the evaluation, why, why should we carry out evaluation uh, for the farmer field school uh, 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 in interventions? Uh, so, so we want to measure if the farmer field schools are relevant and if the participants, the, our participants in these farmer field schools really uh, uh, derive satisfaction in attending the farmer field schools. Uh, we also want to see whether uh, by running the farmer field schools, we are doing, uh, doing, doing, doing it the right way. So we want to see in terms of uh, the effectiveness, the efficiency, and uh, uh, whether we can be able to achieve sustainability of the different interventions that we are doing, but also the, the ultimate end result that we, we, want to, we want to achieve. So that is really a brief, a brief highlight of why we should be able to achieve, uh, do monitoring and evaluation for, for farmer field schools. Now, uh, currently we are in the process of really putting a comprehensive uh, uh, farmer field school monitoring and evaluation system, and that's why I, I came on board. Uh, so, uh, tools, different tools like the from the log frame matrix, uh, the theory of change, uh, the M and E plan, uh, issues to do with the activity and progress reports, and uh, various tools that are used in the farmer field schools, the ISR uh, tool, and all those things are currently. Uh, 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 some of them have already been developed, but others are in the process of us having them finalized. So. This uh, mail framework, I would like to, uh, uh, Pratt and Edwin have already given uh, a, a brief highlight on how the mail framework uh, came about. Uh, so uh, FAO headquarters led, uh, led the development of this uh, mail framework, but it, is, it was mainly to improve issues to do with data collection, analysis, and utilization of all farmer field school interventions. And like uh, Pratt highlighted, uh, uh, it is structured uh, based on the four domains, the human, social, natural, and financial. Uh, and all these four domains guided the development of, uh, of, of the framework. Uh, so, so again, uh, 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 a, a consultative approach was used uh, where various stakeholders are drawn from the NGOs, the academia, from uh, 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 and various field school actors uh, assembled in Addis Ababa. All these were drawn from 12 countries, and they developed indicators and, shared, uh, and set an action plan for the adaptation of the farmer field school uh, mail framework. Now, uh, uh, like Edwin highlighted before, uh, this was a global review process, uh, and uh, uh, under this process, uh, three separate studies were conducted. 
uh, an in-depth case study uh, was conducted and some of the issues that came out from the case study uh, show that uh, uh, the farmer field schools uh, have, have remained relevant uh, wherever they are being operated. Uh, but also the case studies uh, highlighted uh, 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 that uh, farmer field schools assisted farmers mainly to improve their practices and diversify uh, their uh, income sources. Uh, the case studies also uh, showed that uh, uh, showed a need for farmers to work as a group uh, so that they can be able to expand their markets and. Uh, uh, be able to manage uh, those uh, natural resources that they, they might be uh, exposed to. Uh, so that was the first the first aspect of the global review process. Uh, the second one was uh, Uh, highlighted the importance of uh, involving farmers, especially in uh, uh, designing uh, various interventions, uh, training needs, uh, and having the uh, 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 quality of farmer field schools improved. However, the, 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 this questionnaire survey was able to identify that there is a very big gap in issues to do with collection, analysis, and utilization of, uh, of uh, FFS activities. And that has remained a major challenge up to now, uh, which has actually guided the, the development of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of this framework. Now, uh, the global review also guided the development of analytical framework uh, with several result areas uh, which were arranged according to the four, the four domains. And the result areas here, we are looking at the outputs, the outcomes, the impacts, uh, and, uh, and from this re these result areas, indicators, uh, indicators were, were, were developed. So, so in brief, uh, uh, the, the, the four domains are structured in, uh, in, uh, in this presentation, uh, but they are built from, uh, from uh, a skills uh, perspective. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the Disababa workshop, uh, oh, the oh, participants, inshallah, inshallah. The participants oh. agreed that they change uh, uh, the, oh. words, the word skills to, to oh, activities. Yeah. All processes. Uh, so, so the, the skills, the, the, the skills, or, or you'd call them activities or processes, actually now lead us to the desired results that we want to see at output, outcome, and income level. All structured in the in all the in all the four four domains. So, uh, I'll, uh, for example, when you look at uh, when you look at the the human uh, uh, domain. Uh, the desired the desired impact is to see that there is quality of life and uh, and the farmer feels full uh, participants are are empowered. That is really the desired uh, the desired goal. Uh, what we call at impact level. That's what we want to see. Uh, but the outcome of this, we should be able to see that uh, uh, the farmers have confidence and there is a mindset uh, change. They have uh, uh, good health and. Uh, uh, so, so these immediate changes are, are, are what we desire to see at outcome level. Uh, at output level, we would like to see that these uh, farmers have the ability to experiment, to innovate, and to explore various uh, various initiatives uh, that can be able to help them uh, probably improve uh, uh, their uh, well-being and, and livelihood. Of course, the 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 desired the the, the or the, the main objective why farmer field schools operate or the, the overall goal is to see that we are improving production levels and, uh, and uh, the livelihood of, of all the participants of the farmer field schools. So uh, uh, I would now like us to look at uh, in detail uh, some of the indicators that were, were highlighted in the, in the Addis Ababa workshop. And, uh, uh, from the uh, from the human domain, I've just picked out a few, uh, before, uh, and, and these are now the indicators that are actually captured in the in the in the male framework. Uh, 
So from the human uh, from the human uh, domain aspect, the desired impact is, is to see that households become empowered and resilient. So uh, uh, some of the indicators that that were developed and to, to, to for us to be able to achieve that desired uh, that desired impact is uh, uh, percentage of households living above the poverty line. We should be able to to, to measure that uh, uh, during the monitoring and uh, and evaluation. But also we should be able to see the number of households with the diversified livelihood livelihood options. How many households, for example, have been able to uh, maybe open up uh, uh, various enterprises as a result of participating in a particular farmer farmer field school? So those are the things that we want to see uh, in terms of the human domain impact. Uh, the outcome. Uh, the desired change, immediate change that we want to see is uh, households uh, optimally utilizing the resources and as well as the behavior change to make uh, improvements uh, maybe in their well-being and, uh, and livelihood. And some of the indicators that were captured there is, for example, the percentage of households at least being able to break even in the selected enterprises. Uh, who, uh, percentage increase in the size under the size under production. So, uh, if the farmers uh, say before uh, uh, before the farmer field school were maybe cultivating in, uh, in in one acre, how many farmers have been able, as a result of participating in farmer field schools, have been able to expand their areas under production? Uh, we also want to see the percentage of participants adopting interventions probably that the farmer field schools are, are promoting. So those are some of the indicators under the outcome level of, of the human domain impact. Uh, the, Im the immediate output is uh, participants' knowledge and innovativeness increased. And uh, some of the indicators that would lead to that is to see, for example, the per percentage of participants able to make evidence-based decision making a uh, number of good practices emerging and uh, and being utilized. Uh, maybe, uh, I, I, I would also highlight that uh, uh, we are very free to actually give more suggestions on improving these indicators, but uh, the, uh, the, the Addis Ababa workshop really uh, gave a comprehensive breakdown of these indicators. So we shouldn't limit ourselves to saying this, uh, this is what we can go with where we see that there is a, a limited gap, we can actually be able to see how we can improve them. Uh, in the social domain uh, aspect, uh, uh, the desired impact that, that, uh, that uh, we interested to see is uh, good cooperation in the community. That is really the desired uh, uh, goal that we want to see. And some of the indicators that, that were highlighted there include uh, farmers groups empowered, transmotive leadership in the community, uh, percentage of farmer field school group members in the community assuming leadership. Uh, at outcome level, uh, we are looking at uh, the, 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 uh, the desired, out, the desired uh, change is the change and shared gender roles within the farmer field school groups. And then also uh, collective action, uh, maybe for uh, say for marketing or, uh, or for uh, social cohesion. So those are some of the uh, uh, what collective actions uh, 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 are in place within communities. Uh, so the indicators there are uh, we are looking at the level of access to agriculture and uh, social information services and the percentage reduction in conflict among households. So this literally lead to uh, the desired uh, changes uh, uh, in, in in gender roles within farmer field school groups. The output uh, indicator uh, under the social domain is uh, farmer field school group cohesion enhanced, uh, trust, mutual respect, and group learning also enhanced. And some of the indicators there would want, uh, that were developed include the number of women youth groups uh, members participating in decision making, increased level of trust and respect among, among members. And uh, when you look at the natural domain, uh, the desired impact there is the sustainable production systems enhanced, and the indicators that were put forth uh, include the percentage of households that are food and nutrition secure. Uh, we should be able to measure that. And the number of communities uh, uh, or households with sustainable environmental initiatives. So uh, as we are uh, 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 
uh, uh, running farmer field schools, uh, what are we able to see some of these uh, changes, sustainable environment you know, initiatives in the community? Uh, we should be able to report about, about that whenever we are running farmer field schools. The outcome, the desired outcome is production and pro food production and enterprise systems diversified and uh, agro ecosystems are uh, improved. And some of the indicators there included the number of households registering improved production levels, uh, number of communities with improved biodiverse uh, diverse initiatives, and uh, increased high value commodities in the farming systems. The output uh, result under the natural domain uh, indicator, uh, I mean, the natural domain include the crop diversification enhanced, livestock product productivity improved, experimenting with alternatives and uh, improved practices. And uh, some of the indicators that would be able to uh, lead to that, uh, the number of households adopting good agricultural practices, number of households adopting uh, agroecosystem management practices, uh, and so on and so forth. And then finally, in the financial uh, domain, uh, the impact is to see that uh, uh, field school practitioners uh, are financially secure and there is uh, improved income among uh, the households. Uh, so the indicators to measure that uh, would include the, uh, measure it through household assets, uh, sustainable, inclusive, and uh, responsive markets. Uh, this should be functional, uh, I mean, first, first of all, available and functional. Uh, the outcome there is household income sources diversified. Uh, there should be access to uh, 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 credit, uh, and uh, uh, participants also should be able to manage financial uh, resources. Uh, some of the indicators there would be the percentage of farmer field school members that have diversified their income sources and percentage of farmer field school members that have access to, to credit. The outputs uh, include improving, improve, um, uh, uh, improving business management skills for farmer field school members, uh, functional market linkages established, access to credit of farmer field school improved, and uh, uh, the indicators include the percentage of participants, with, uh, for example, business plans. So as we are running farmer field schools, how many of our, of our farmers are now able to come up with different uh, business plans for the various enterprises that they will, they will be inter uh, establishing? Uh, are the farmers, for example, able to do cost benefit analysis? So we should expect that uh, uh, if a farmer field school is, uh, is, is, being, is, is being run on an enterprise perspective, then uh, farmers should be able to gain knowledge in uh, uh, conducting cost-benefit cost analysis and should be able to measure that whenever we are doing monitoring and evaluation. Uh, number of farmers with access to market information uh, and the number of uh, farmer field schools with credit systems in place. Uh, already a number of farmer field schools are actually uh, running credit schemes, so uh, we should be able to, to, to actually capture that data and be able to report. So uh, the MEL framework, this MEL framework uh, incorporates uh, the, the theory of change and, uh, and the log frame, as well as uh, details uh, uh, planned approaches to monitoring, evaluation, and learning. Now, this is not a static document. Uh, this document uh, uh, is, can be subject to uh, improvement uh, because farmer field schools, farmer field schools continue evolving and uh, programs keep keep changing. So uh, we are. So as time goes on, uh, we would also expect that uh, this document will uh, uh, continue being improved. Uh, so we cannot take this as a final uh, uh, blueprint for, for, for farmer field schools, but we should always be able we have, have the flexibility to, to improve it as uh, uh, various farmer field school uh, uh, interventions keep evolving. Now, uh, a brief highlight on the theory of change. Uh, uh, for, for, for those uh, with uh, uh, maybe limited knowledge of a theory of change, a theory of change mainly describes the process of a desired uh, uh, change that we want to see. Uh, so it gives, so for the farmer field school, uh, it presents the logic of the interventions and how they lead to achievement of uh, uh, broader objectives. 
And uh, these uh, interventions are directly derived from the four specific domains and the and the result areas that we have highlighted uh, in, uh, in 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 those in, in those domains. Uh, uh, I think at the end of uh, at the end of this uh, uh, presentation, our uh, our uh, the, the theory of change uh, is still uh, in the process of, uh, of we are finalizing. Uh, uh, the development of the theory of change for the farmer field school. So I'll, uh, at the end of the presentation, I will highlight uh, what uh, how how it is structured so that we are able to see. But uh, uh, I think, uh, like Max highlighted earlier on, uh, 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 when you might be invited to to give some inputs and some ideas on how we can actually have a structured uh, a clear structure in terms of our theory of change. So. That that uh, diagram is supposed to be here, but I'll be able to show you at the end of the presentation. Now, uh, so so like I said, uh, the the the, log, the the MEL framework uh, is uh, incorporates the theory of change as well as uh, the the log frame, and uh, the uh, in the Disababa workshop. Uh, the log frame was also already structured, and uh, I already shared it with some of some of us in in this platform for for, for your input, so that we have a final comprehensive document. Uh, but this log frame is derived from the theory of of of, of change. Uh, so some of the ideas that we've already that that were already structured, and its purpose is really to serve as a reference for. Uh, for planning, uh, monitoring pro pro progress of the initiatives towards uh, uh, our desired objectives, and uh, for evaluating the overall performance, uh, performance and impacts of, of, of the farmer field school in initiative. So, so this log frame uh, really demonstrates uh, details of uh, how the inputs interact logically, uh, uh, leading into outputs, outcomes, and uh, and finally the, the the desired impact. So. For for each tire, for for each of the result, I mean for each of the domains and the result areas, uh, the log frame contains uh, indicators uh, that can be directly attributable to the farmer field schools, and uh, and uh, it ensures that monitoring and reporting is robust and and efficient. Uh, I just picked out uh, one of the domains uh, for us to. It's a very it's a very big document that I uh, is. Uh, uh, we shall be able to, to share with all of us, but I just picked out uh, one of the domains for us to index to, to highlight how the log frame is structured. So, so particularly this uh, this table highlights the human uh, the human domain, and uh, and like like I stated earlier on, uh, the desired impact is to see uh, empowerment and improved quality of life. Uh, so the indicator uh, there uh, include the percentage households uh, percentage households uh, of perceived satisfaction, including their economic health and their education uh, improvement. And then we are looking at the confidence and problem solving capabilities of of the farmer field school practitioners. So how will how shall we be able to measure to measure this? Uh, uh, you can use both a qualitative and a quantitative approach, and uh, some of the survey tools suggested there include perception surveys, uh, case studies, uh, baseline baseline studies. Uh, you can go into uh, probably uh, activity of uh, activity of uh, progress monitoring. You can also be able to 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 use some of those tools to be able to measure. Uh, 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 these indicators that would lead to the desired uh, 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 impact. Uh, at outcome level, uh, we are looking at efficient utilization of resources at household level and the behavior change at, uh, of the farmer field schools to make improvements uh, achieved. And uh, also, we shall be able to measure this both qualitatively and quantitatively. And again, uh, we think that uh, the best way to measure this is the use of uh, surveys as well as case studies and uh, and uh, and success stories. Uh, at output level, we have the participants' analytical uh, ability and critical thinking improved, as well as problem-solving skills. Uh, so we are looking at the uh, the number of participants being able to make evidence-based decisions. 
and the number of participants being able to apply problem solving skills. Again, we shall be able to measure this using, uh, say, in depth interviews, uh, focus group discussions, uh, post uh, uh, pre and post uh, post uh, test, uh, maybe during uh, uh, a farmer field school. Uh, 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 process, uh, you could uh, uh, measure uh, uh, before what what their problem solving skills were and after the farmer field school, uh, you do uh, a post evaluation to assess if they are able to to actually solve some of some of the problems. So so this is how the the, the log frame is structured. Uh, for us now is to say which tools, which specific tools should be en should be able to enable us achieve uh, the to, to measure these uh, uh, indicators that will lead us to achieving these uh, different uh, various result areas. And so we have developed uh, uh, a number of tools. Uh, we have uh, the activity uh, uh, process template, uh, activity or process template. We have a, a progress report template. We have the ISR, the ISR tool. All this should be able to enable us be able to 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 to, to measure some of these uh, indicators. Uh, the last bit of uh, 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 this, uh, the framework looks at the learning bit, and uh, we are saying that the learning activities uh, uh, mainly ensure that the results stemming from the M and E process uh, are captured, uh, feedback is given, and they are broadly shared uh, with the uh, uh, various stake stakeholders. So, from every monitoring and evaluation uh, a bit, there should be a learning a, a learning outcome. We should be able to learn from from it, and the, the knowledge management and communication functions under the farmer field schools should be able to have the capacity to report these lessons learned uh, from the various farmer field school interventions to 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 to, to the various stakeholders that that, that are, are running the the, the farmer field schools. So, like I said, uh, uh, to be able to, to, to measure some of these uh, uh, desired changes, uh, we've developed quite a number of tools, uh, case study and success story tools, uh, documentation, we are already uh, uh, using some of those tools uh, in Uganda, uh, Kenya, and uh, Tanzania and Burundi, and especially with the investment, uh, investment programs. Uh, we have also put a comprehensive M and E work plan for the farmer field school, and uh, this plan mainly uh, looks at the guides on the regular data collection, uh, describes modalities and uh, key mechanisms for M and E, as well as enables time evidence-based decision making. We also have progress report templates, uh, which show progress towards achieving the plan priorities, and we have uh, the ISR reporting tool. Uh, all those have, have, have been uh, uh, captured as annexes in the in the mail framework which are, which we shall be sharing with the with all with all of all all, 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 all the all the farmer field school practitioners. So uh, briefly uh, that's a, 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 a brief introduction to 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 the to the mail to the mail framework. Uh, thank you. So I would like now to invite uh, to invite uh, uh, any questions if we have. Uh, but uh, uh, let me uh, sh uh, share briefly uh, what we have in terms of our theory of change and uh, how the, the the process that we are actually taking to to develop it. So. Uh, Well, thank you, Nathan, uh, as you're sharing it. The members, you can start posting your questions in the chat box, or you will raise your hand, then we will give you that opportunity. Already there are some uh, comments in the chat box. You can also go through, particularly from Ori. Proceed, Nathan. Okay.
So I don't know if this is visible for us. So uh, that is the uh, our farmer field school theory of change. Uh, it's uh, it's it's not yet complete, but we are trying to uh, to, to to have it uh, structured, and uh, we shall be be able to share with the with all of us. So this theory of change is is uh, guided from the from the four, uh, the four the, the four domains. Uh, so we are able to see the financial, the social, the human, and the natural domain, and uh, and uh, 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 it is structured in those uh, uh, different result areas, activities, outputs, outcomes, impact, and the uh, the final. But we have the initial impact and the the final impact. And uh, the final impact is to look at uh, we, what we desire to see is the improved livelihood and well-being, uh, uh, as well as uh, uh, farmer field school uh, participants of. Uh, practitioners being able to have food and nutritional security, as well as empowered, uh, empowered communities. That is the ultimate goal that, uh, that uh, uh, under which farmer field schools, field schools operate. So, so, so when you look at uh, this, uh, particularly this uh, uh, the human domain, uh, the activity there, like I already highlighted when I was uh, showing you the indicators, we are looking at enhancing participants' analytical skills. Uh, the outputs are those uh, outcomes and, and final results. So this is a, a, a document that, that, that we are putting together and we shall be able to, to share with you uh, to uh, have your, your suggestions, but that's already how it is, uh, it is structured. Uh, so uh, thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan. Uh, this is quite a very good presentation, quite elaborate. And the dons on this uh, forum, I think they should all award us as certificate or diplomas in M and uh, monitoring and evaluation at the end of this session. So we will invite your comments and sentiments. Uh, I will start with the one mentioned by Ori it may seem difficult to measure these changes at the human social domains, as most of this is based on perceptions rather than a physical measure. We don't have an elaborate scale. There will need to be a pre and post test, but my, con my concern is potential respondents bias in the pre-test. They may just want to tell you what you want to hear, not exactly what is going on. So those are just observations from uh, Ori, but the rest of us, we have a few minutes that we can uh, also voice our concerns and our, our other sentiments. Over to you. Want to see some raised hands? Hey, where are people? I see the, the experts of Emani are here, including Isaac, including Opio JP, eh, including eh, Dr. Esther, you know. I, give, give, uh, give us some, some, some highlights. Anyway, maybe I just start off and say, I think, thank you, Nathan, again for this. It's, it's good. Work in progress, as usual. Also, you know, Emani keeps evolving. But also most important, I had uh, also a chat with Ori on the, on the same some of I mean some of these issues. We may want to focus on few indicators for a start. What is it that we can really track? Because the, the, these are so many, and normally now the M and E becomes very complicated for people who don't have a lot of time also to do the work. And remember, we are relying on the people who have their own M and E systems and also sometimes they have their own lot of indicators. So in a way they they will be adapting some of this 
some definitely who are implementing field schools will take the, the male framework as it is. But I think as we move forward, we need to start guiding on, say, what, which ones are critical indicators that if we come to the field school for a beginning, we really need to see them. Easily, we could really track them. And as we, of course, track the rest, but we should have some focus, few indicators. That is, uh, yeah. Yes. Hello. 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 Deborah Gole. Proceed, David. Yes, Doctor, go ahead. Oh, Peter. Doctor, yes, Doctor David, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Gole, proceed. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Nathan, for that elaborate uh, uh, explanation on the on the main framework and the, together with the, the, the log model and the, the theory of change. And also the, the background that Ori gave. Thank you so much, it's very educative. I just wanted to, to add a few thing, things. Uh, under the logo, because you said the, the, the impact could be, the, the data could be collected using qualitative. It, it would be good to, to specify video documentaries, because when you want to see the quality of life that people have achieved or developed, it would be good to show through a video. It carries a lot more meaning. Yeah, if you collect a take video knob and, and, and have people watch and see people, how people's lives have transformed over time, it, it, has, it has a lot of weight. And then coming back to the theory of change, uh, I would want to talk about the different other other theories that can be used in in development programs. But uh, development programs implemented in developing countries seem to be inclined so much on the theory of change. There are other models that can be used, but in this situation, we can continue to use theory of change. However, uh, there are different there are different forms in which a logo frame can be developed. What actually you have indicated in the theory of change? Diagrammatic, the, the diagram of the of change shows another model of developing. It's another way of developing a, a logo frame that is more of a logo frame developed in another format. There are different formats of developing logo frame. The other one you presented is a research based, but the other format, so it's more of a, another format of, uh, of, of a logo frame. So we could probably need to think about uh, the alternative. Uh, uh, another way, there is maybe there is a. I saw one developed by the a disability organization. I'll share with you. I see how I can borrow from that. I thank you for listening. Thank you, Dr. Yes, Agole. Yes. So maybe we hear from John Peter and then uh, we, we can ask the two presenters to, to respond, Ori and Nathan. So, Pio, proceed. Are you hearing me? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it has been long overdue. We've been waiting for this framework and put Nathan under pressure on me to share the template so that uh, we input into it. I think we're in the right direction. I may say we now have a bit of sig of relief as to the direction we should take as we implement field schools. Questions have always been asked. What are these field schools? Are they necessary? Are they relevant? What are the results? So now we have to begin to carry right from planning level, actual situation analysis. I don't want to repeat the same thing. Nothing has indicated it's generic, it's open, we can contribute. Only pray that you share the you share the templates with us on May. All the templates are, he has mentioned a lot of tools. Please pour them to us so that we can clinically look through and see what we can contribute or leave as it is. However, that for my observation is more from the perspective of the technical people, researchers, academicians. What about the farm perspective? 
those guys have a lot of information to dig out using the tools. Of course, not only the industry. There are so many other, as you, as you mentioned, by the, by the previous report. I think that's all I have to say. We only await for the document. The soft. Thank you. We will share the, the presentation. Uh, but now I will relate to our two key presenters or any other person to, to respond to those two concerns from Dr. Agole and from uh, JP. Uh, okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Pratt highlighted that indeed it is very difficult to, to measure uh, perceptions, uh, 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 aspects of aspects, the result areas of the human and uh, social aspects, because uh, uh, doing a pre and post test uh, is uh, might be subject to to some some bias. Uh, I think that uh, 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 some of the things that I'm, I was I was already looking at in this framework is. Uh, uh, coming up with the uh, uh, proxy indicators that would be able to help us uh, be able to, to 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 measure some of the social social uh, some of these aspects that are highlighted in the impact and uh, uh, in the human and the social, and the social domain. Uh, I'll give an example. Uh, uh, I'm I'm still trying to think uh, of, of, of proxy indicators for 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 for, for, for some of these. Uh, uh, initiatives, but let me give an example of a proxy indicator uh, uh, outside the pharma field school. If you look at, uh, it's difficult to measure issues to do with stigma. Uh, people who are exposed to HIV AIDS and they are stigmatized, so you'll be very, it will be very difficult for you to measure that. Uh, but uh, how you could achieve that is, for example, to ask something like, uh, how many people would be willing to to say kiss. Uh, an HIV AIDS uh, AIDS person, you see that, so that would be able to, uh, to, to that would be able to lead you to uh, being able to measure uh, that particular that aspect of, of stigma. So some of these difficult indicators that are very difficult to measure, uh, we're already thinking of uh, putting in uh, proxy indicators that would be able to to to. to to lead us to some of those so that we do not even do uh, the pre and post test evaluations uh, that can be subject to, to issues to do with bias but actually uh, carry out a comprehensive uh, maybe survey uh, to, to, to be able to achieve some of those results and various options of developing theories of change are, are, are welcome uh, but we are putting uh, this uh, first of all as one option and then we shall be able to welcome uh, some of those uh, uh, ideas that 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 you could be you could be having. Uh, JP, uh, I already shared uh, this document uh, internally amongst us, and uh, I already put some of the tools like uh, an M and E plan uh, for for the pharma field schools uh, activity or progress uh, process uh, reporting template. I, I also put a, I captured the progress reporting template. Uh, there is also the ISR, the ISR tool, updated one that actually you had input, uh, uh, you actually guided in, in developing. So all of those have been added uh, as uh, into the mail framework document, and uh, we shall be able to circulate this for for, for your further input. Back to you, Edwin. Thank you, uh, Nathan, and to the members in this platform. This is the first time you are going to use this ML guide within the region. So there'll be a lot of people looking for answers, looking for direction. I've seen the concern from Amariat that we should make it as simple as possible, particularly for the MTs, the master trainers who are going to be doing some technical backstopping to the investment programs. At the same time, from Jen Kadure, uh, we need to look at the issues of conflict reduction at household level. I uh, wish Dr. Mutungi will have been here to share with us something on a peace and conflict uh, impact assessment of, for, for peace and conflict resolution. I will ask him to maybe to, to share that in the next meeting. Then uh, I've seen uh, Baha, your hand is up. We'll give you this opportunity to voice your sentiments. Over to you. 
Thank you, Edwin. Thank you, the presenters, Ori and uh, Nathan, for a good uh, job. I just have an observation. Aware that uh, FFS is an approach, I just want to agree with um, Max on, on, on the fact that uh, perhaps we need now to, to be able to uh, bring programs on board on this because this is a fairly simple uh, framework, yes, but it needs to be institutionalized by program so that we can be able to give it um, uh, the credit that it deserves in terms of uh, seeing how FFS has been able to, pro to contribute to, to the development objectives of the programs that are being implemented. Uh, and I think you have rightfully said, uh, Edwin, that it is now upon us to start uh, sensitizing programs because this is a very wonderful thing. I share the observations of um, uh, Ndugu uh, uh, from Uganda talking about, yes, does FFS really bring change? I think this is the right time for us to be able to bring the conventional frameworks and the FFS mail system for, for us to be able to show a difference. Thank you, thank you very much. I think we've made a good, good stride. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Baha. Uh, any other concern? We have four minutes to go. Yes, Edwin. Please go ahead, Amariat. Ed Edwin, can I speak? Oh, it's, oh, it's Isaac. Yeah, please, please proceed. Oh, okay. Thank you very much, Nathan, for the elaborate presentation. I actually that gives us a good foundation uh, to enrich this tool. Uh, my observation is like uh, some of the uh, pre the previous uh, 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 comments. I see the tool is indeed very detailed and the. Some of the indicators might really give us a hard time to measure. So I think uh, we still need to, uh, moving forward, we need to contextualize some of these indicators and zero down on those that can easily be measured in our context. So I, I really would, would like to agree with Nathan that let's develop proxy indicators which can be measured. Otherwise, we might struggle with measuring some of the indicators as we implement these activities. Thank you. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Isaac, for that observation. We have to keep it simple. Kiss. So, Ori, please take over. Thanks, Edwin. Um, I just wanted to re reply to, to Baha. Thanks for that comment. Um, one thing that we had not mentioned today is the peripheral sort of effect, um, uh, the peripheral level of this framework, and, and that certainly includes the part of institutionalization. So, you know, the, the development or, or carrying forward the framework will certainly help us in many different aspects, not just at the, the site impact level or the program impact level, but uh, to, the, to the effect in which it's institutionalized in academia or government or NGOs, the effect of which, you know, how much the, this framework is utilized. And of course, that leads us further into donor prospects. Uh, donors want to see what sort of impacts the programs have. And if we don't have this information at hand, then you know, what can we really attest to? Um, and also, so, so that's certainly a concern of, of ours at the, the program level, um, not just you know, what the effect of one particular FFS group or site has, but you know, the holistic measure of, of impact so that we can report to our agencies, but reports to donors as well. Um, and then Isaac, you certainly brought up a, a very good point, and this is, has been the challenge for us on the development end of either developing or deciding on the appropriate indicators to use. Um, and, you know, when you have people at the theoretical level, um, or you know the program management level that often don't get out into the fields, uh, that can certainly be a challenge. So it's great to have this input, um, you know, from from the grassroots level, from the people that are the practitioners. 
that you know say that if it's too complex uh, or if it's adequate enough for measures. And and somebody also brought up the point of this uh, the weakness in between between research extension and farmers. And and this is something we're very cognizant of and we need to work on in the future. So uh, we hope that you know carrying forward our our different development strategies in the future that we can strengthen those linkages. So I'll just, uh, I'll leave it there and, and thanks so much for this great conversation today. Thank you, thank you so much, Ori. Uh, I noticed our colleague, uh, Mr. Evans Makoha, I don't know whether you could also share with us on how you are managing the impact of conflict, especially for the pastoralist field schools. Mr. Makoha, if you can hear me, especially those cross-border issues, uh, resource sharing agreements. Are you able to contribute something, Mr. Makoha? Hello, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Adair. Uh, I'm sorry, I've been out of touch with the, uh, the, the FFS uh, activities. I've been heavily been involved in some other activities, uh, but uh, maybe at a later stage, I'll be able to share some information. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you so much. So now, um, members, I want to say thank you so much for your consistency and for your participation in today's webinar. Uh, I will just now relate to Max for the final works. And then, of course, the presentation will be shared to everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Edwin. And thanks, everyone, for a very lively discussion. Thanks, Ori and Nathan, for leading us in this mail. Of course, I know it has taken us a time right from um, a bit of Kigali, then we had enough time in Addis Ababa, but also it reflects more on the meeting I had with the, I attended with the Ori in, in Rome, where we are talking about digitalization of the field school. Still, the mail comes in, in play. Uh, so we need to start really implementing some of the elements. Like everyone has said, we may not move the mail in a holistic way, but we should be able to find elements that we can start with. For, purpose, for the theory of change, in fact, most organizations now are moving to theory of change. Uh, from outcome mapping, the log frames. So the theory of change basically makes you to understand how you move to achieve your goal, how the processes that are involved. The log frames normally are very concrete, they are more conventional in, in talking about outcome, out, uh, out, impact outcome, uh, outputs and activities. But the theory of change gives you even the process that you need to go there. So it is a stepwise thing. So the only most important thing is to making it simple for people to understand, but also be able to implement it. So I'm happy that Nathan has taken time to start the process. So all of us are called upon to give feedback. I think Nathan, you will circulate this. Let uh, the colleagues give their feedback uh, through uh, uh, online. Then in the future, we can again uh, arrange for a, a two hours or one hour meeting online to see how we're making progress. So from where I am sitting now, I am excited that we are moving forward. And I, I look forward to implementation of some of this, but also for the master trainers to take charge. Because you are the ambassadors, you are the, you are the people who really take some of these things forward quickly. So if you have questions, feel free to get back to us, especially Nathan and Ori. Then uh, as you, you are talking to stakeholders uh, in the field, introduce the elements of the mail with this uh we wish to continue net being networked and also wednesday we have a number of consultants that are currently doing a, a lot of work at the field school 
So we would like you to start mobilizing all our stakeholders to participate so that we hear them presenting different things that are, they are discovering that they want us to give feedback uh, next Wednesday. We also feel that we may get a guest speaker on a, to give us some insights on some topic. So I wish you well and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, as it is your tra our tradition, let's put our videos on for our last photo, and then uh, we can proceed to to live at our own pleasure. Hmm. Um, Edwin, unmute my video. Uh oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> now let me unmute. Uh, we clear. Everybody now. Abaria Kenya Wana. You are there enjoying life. Salama, <laughs> salama, salama. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, Edwin, unmute my video. Yes, yes, I've done that. James. Okay, Thanks. Fred. Fred. Fred is a uh, Fred, you could move a bit your camera so that we see you like we are seeing Dr. Esther very visible, like a typical Uganda, not Kenyan. <laughs> <laughs> so okay yes yes ah great hmm uh, max we forgot to introduce people like ibenu sharon our you better you better you, we, you better introduce them, them as... we can give them a chance next wednesday just to say a word or two yeah sharon we we notice your presence uh, Olivia, yes, uh, Olivia is one of them. Olivia also, yeah. I can see Roheni, Jen. Jen Roheni is one of our research assistants. Yes, yes. Uh, Even James, James. From Nakuru, James. Yeah, Yes, we have, uh, we have a person Dr. like Dr. Isaac. Yeah, yeah, very good, we have. So next week we shall introduce the groups like Isaac, Timothy, who will be working with agribusiness and Isaac, you'll be working closely with OPOJP and we you'll be you'll always be contacting Wycliffe. Wycliffe is a season extension is and, and our senior colleague in the Ministry of Agriculture Livestock in Kenya. So when you go there, Nyamachoma is assured he's a big man, he will just sign for you. <laughs> <laughs> but they you know the ministry they put a kitchen garden behind the ministry and they, at the front of the ministry they have a restaurant so there's just food in that ministry so take the photo that's why it's called Kilimo <laughs> Kilimo <yeah. laughs> that's cool, okay. thank you so much for the MCs thank and uh, the other guys you can remain and we have our own small in-house discussions Thank you. Bye -bye. So we remain with all the volunteers and the master trainers and actually eh, eh, others who feel like they want to join. We, they, you can join briefly. That's for five minutes. Huh. Are, we, are we through with the photo session? We can log out the videos? <laughs>